host, Cynthia Thompson, and I'm here again with my guest host, Dr. Matt, the leading Charlotte exotic animal veterinarian here in the Charlotte metro area. Now, Dr. Matt, the last time you were on my show, we talked a lot about domestic animals, so we didn't get to talk about the exotic ones. How did you get interested in treating exotic animals? Well, when I was, um, one of the things I want to, I um, nowadays, when I first came to Charlotte back in 1988, uh -huh. there was only about three or four of us that did exotic animals. Like I said earlier, exotic animals are, you know, snakes, reptiles, uh, lizards, monkeys, anything that's other than a dog and cat, uh -huh. but smaller than a lion and a tiger and a bear. <laughs> you know? And uh, so now I just have a, a special interest uh, in exotic medicine. But when I was growing up, I worked at an animal hospital with one of the leading veterinarians that um, worked on birds. And that's uh -huh. where it started, birds. And 20, 20 25 years ago, um, there was no information out no type of um, studies done, no, no books written on how to treat a snake. Uh -huh. you know, so this was back in the day, trial and error. So I grew up, I mean, working in animal hospitals with guys that had an interest in this. And so through trial and error, we was able to figure out, you know, basically what type of antibiotic worked on a, a snake with pneumonia, you know, um, what type of antibiotic worked, you know, on how to do surgery, what type of medicines that we were using, sedatives we were using on dogs and cats worked on these type of animals. Uh -huh. And so when I went to veterinary school, you know, I did um, little mentor programs or went to different places where they worked on snakes and iguanas uh, and these exotic animals uh, until I graduated. Then I did an internship at the University of Tennessee and worked with a guy named Dr. Richard Funk mm -hmm. who like worked on everything weird. And uh, that's where I got a lot of my um, training from. Uh -huh. And so when I came to Charlotte, one of the things I did was um, got in contact with every pet store in Charlotte to let them know that I was here and I had an interest in, you know, these exotic animals. And, mm -hmm. and if they brought me animals that died, I would do autopsies on them. Oh, uh, really? And find out what, why they died, thereby I was able to help the ones that were coming to the office sick. Uh -huh. And this is where, it, you know, I garnered the, the reputation of, you know, the snake doctor, you know, a reptile guy, uh -huh. this sort of thing. So, do a lot of people own exotic animals here in Charlotte? Well, you know, yes and no. It's, it's a lot of them own it, but most of them don't get sick. You know, they don't bring them to the hospital. That's what. Oh, you know, really? So, yeah. So we have no idea who owns what, because it always surprises me. You know, like for instance, about nine years ago, this 65-year-old African American woman comes in with a 13-foot-long Burmese python. Now, Ooh. Like, huh? You know. Where did you get this? How, you know, how did you get it? You know? Yeah, and she bought it for somebody for four hundred dollars, and what she did was she placed the animal in the bathroom. You know, it's a thirteen foot long snake. Well, most people in your bathroom you have tile, right? Right, and tile is cold. Well, you know, reptiles are cold blooded, so their body temperature is only the temperature of the surroundings. So it was about sixty five, seventy degrees. Well, the animal couldn't digest his food. It came down with pneumonia. So that's why she brought him to the hospital. Uh -huh. But I was more shocked at, you know, whoa, you know, what are you doing with this big snake? So when she realized what it, what, the, what type of care it took to take care of an animal like that, she she found it a better home. Ah. Oh. Yeah. So I mean, so you know, people here, you know, 25 years ago, there wasn't really any laws to keep you from having, you know, these exotic animals. But here in Mecklenburg County, the laws are very, are very, very strict of what you can and cannot have. Oh, really? So what can well, you, you can't have? Really have anything over uh, 50 pounds, uh -huh. you know, uh, but who's going to know? I mean, if you got a 75-pound, 100-pound, 14-foot snake in your house, nobody's going to know that unless something happens. They weigh that much? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They can get that big and weigh that much. Yes, ma'am. Really? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And so, she wasn't afraid? No, no, most of, no, that was that snake, but some of these guys got some big snakes. And you can't have, you can't have anything poisonous. You know, rattlesnakes, and you know, most people won't keep a copperhead or anything like that. So, it's different people, different types. It's got a different type of personality to have a snake in yeah. general. Yeah, yeah. You know, but most snakes that people keep are, you know, corn snakes, a little small snake called the ball python that only gets about six feet long. You know, these type of things. And mostly they're children. Most mm -hmm. kids, you know, teenagers have an interest in reptiles. Mm -hmm. Are mice considered an exotic pet? No, mice are. It's a rodent. 
But people do have mice as pets. I do see mice. People do bring mice and rats into the hospital. Matter of fact, about 10 years ago, someone brought in a, a rat and it, I diagnosed it with congestive heart failure. So I um, was able to put it on medicine and give the rat another six, eight months to live. And then they brought me a calendar because it was, it was part of a rat society, a rat club. And that rat had with the poster child the month of January. So they had like a rat calendar, and that rat that I treated was January. I forgot his name. <laughs> so you needed to save him. Yeah, I he had was, to save him. He was, he, was, he, he was famous. He was an actor. He was, he was famous. He was famous. <laughs> he could have been in a Dr. Doolittle movie. <laughs> so what are some other animals, exotic animals, that people aren't supposed to have in their homes in Charlotte? Well, you can't have raccoons. Uh huh. You can't have raccoons. You have a special license for raccoons. Skunks, you know, mm -hmm. but in South Carolina, they have skunk clubs. You know, yeah, they have skunk clubs. I'll never forget a lady uh, from South Carolina called me because she had been treated in South Carolina. They couldn't figure out what's wrong with the the, uh, the skunk. And um, I didn't, that's the first time I've ever seen because most people think skunks are just black and white. Right. Albino skunks, and some of them are brown and white. You huh. Know? Right, yeah, and this one was brown and white. And I was like, whoa. Uh -huh. you know, I had never seen that before. And um, the skunk had, once again, he had a congestive heart failure. And so the reason why we knew this, we took x-rays and did blood work, and his heart was much larger than, larger than it should have been. Uh -huh. and, um, and so we was able to treat it and get that, that skunk healthy. And uh, so I've had monkeys come in from South Carolina, yeah, monkeys with cancer, monkeys with broken arms, you know. So, uh, you know, over 24 years being here, I've seen quite a few exotic animals. <clears throat> so what animals can you not have in North Carolina? You well, mentioned South Charlotte, Carolina. Yeah, Char and we're talking about Mecklenburg County. Now, sh outside of, you know, Mecklenburg County, there's different laws for different mm -hmm. counties, you know. So here in Mecklenburg County, you know, it's a weight limit, and it's also a type. They have a list of things that you can, I'm sure you can uh, go on the website and see what you can and cannot have. Okay. You know, animal control. You know, now we're really, really strict here in Charlotte uh -huh. about what type of exotic animals you can uh -huh. have, can and cannot have. You know, we were talking about snakes before, and everybody's heard about the problem in Florida with all the snakes being right, let, let loose. loose. Right. Why, how and why did that happen and what should happen next? Well, what, in your what opinion. Happened was the, the temperature down in Florida, you know, 80, 85 degrees some places, and what these people get these snakes, you know, you know these pythons at, when they're two feet long, and then lo and behold, in two years, they're 12 feet long. Well, they can't do anything with it. The snake is gets aggressive. They can't afford to feed it because by that time they go from eating rats to need to be eating rabbits, and rabbits are a whole lot more expensive than rats. Aww. And so they release them. They release them into the Everglades, and then these snakes find other snakes and they start breeding. And now they're actually uh, doing a lot of damage to the native rodents, the native animals, the raccoons, and the the uh, uh, other animals there that these snakes are eating and wiping uh -huh. out the, the, the natural habitat. Uh -huh. That's why it's a big problem. Uh -huh. But that won't happen around here because we don't have that type of land. We don't have that type of terrain. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have swamps. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have, you know, consistent 80 degree days. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, here, you know, this, you know, we get snow. Mm -hmm. you know, we get 32 degree, 32 degree days mm -hmm. and a reptile can't survive in that. So what should Florida do? Or they 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 got they they on it. They try, go out there capturing these snakes. Yeah, they capturing them. They're going out there capturing them, setting traps and everything. You can set a you can set a trap for a snake. Yeah. And a snake is not smart enough not to fall for it. No, 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 no. They still animals. They still you know still on that low end of the totem pole uh -huh. as far as evolution, brain uh -huh. evolution. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's food in it, you know. They go for it. They go for it. But what is the danger of trying to capture these snakes? Well, only professionals are doing it. So oh, you know, okay. You don't just have people going out there trying to. You sure? <laughs> oh, <or> positive. <laughs> well, I'm sure you got some idiots out there trying to do it, but. <laughs> I'm sure there's some idiots out there trying to do it. <laughs> you know, I guess until they, until they start trying to, you know, like a bounty, you know, uh -huh. you bring in 10 snakes, you get, you know, a thousand bucks. You know, people leave those snakes alone. So what are they doing with these snakes once they capture them? It all depends. I mean, I've seen it on Animal Planet where some of them are destroyed and some of them are uh. taken to other, you know, um, zoos, uh -huh. you know, because some of these snakes are 14, 15 feet long. That's a snake. So what should you do if you come across one of those? You ain't going to come across one of them here. No, I mean, not. if you're so, in Florida. If you're in Florida. 
and you happen to see one. I'm hoping it, you with somebody. He sees you. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? What do you? What should I do? Do the same thing I'm gonna do. Run. <laughs> <laughs> but won't the run. snake run after no, you? No, 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 no. That snake is just a, even here in North Carolina. You know, we you see black snakes, you see garter snakes, you see brown snakes. You know, and a snake is just gonna run. A snake is just scared of you. You of it. You know, uh -huh. so and then we don't have too many poison snakes. We got the copperhead. Of course, you got the moccasins near water. You know, but you know, rattlesnakes are up in the mountains. Uh -huh. You know, uh, so you don't have anything to fear. I mean, most people are scared to death of snakes, but mm -hmm. it just is harmless. You know, I'm afraid. I mean, you think too. about it. You think about it. You in your house, what are you gonna do if a mouse comes from around the corner? Scream. Scream. So same thing you're gonna do with a snake if you walking down. I mean, how many times you walking down the street and all of a sudden you see a snake? No, it doesn't happen that often. Uh -huh. No, you out in the woods, you you lift up a, a log you shouldn't be lifting up, uh -huh. and it startles you. So anything that startles you gonna scare you anyway. Uh -huh. You know, you walking down, you walking in your house, somebody say, hey, uh -huh. don't scare me like that. But same thing, you know. <laughs> but as long as you know it's there, uh -huh. somebody tell you, all right, when you turn that corner, there's a snake right there. You're not gonna be startled. You're gonna uh -huh. be cautious. Uh -huh. You're gonna proceed with caution. Well, uh -huh. that's the same thing you got to do with anything. So, what are some things to keep snakes out of your house? I know you get this question a lot. Yeah, yeah nothing. <laughs> you know, nothing. Get a well-built house. <laughs> not even. If you open your door, no, it's no chemicals. No, where they say lime, Epsom salt. I mean, all this other crazy stuff I've heard. Uh huh. No, there's nothing gonna keep a snake out of your house if he you want to get in it to get something. Oh, really? Yeah. He don't uh -huh. want to be in your house, but if your house, if it's 50 degrees outside and 80 in your house, he want to be in your <gasps> house. <laughs> so keep your house cool, right. huh? Right, keep your house right, yeah, there you go. Keep your house cool, you don't have to worry about the snake. <laughs> if it's 50 degrees in your house, you sure enough don't have to worry about that snake. <laughs> you know, Dr. Matt, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about some other animals you treated, okay? No problem. Coming home can be hard if you're a veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan. You may feel like you're all alone, but you're not alone. At IAVA.org, your fellow vets are all around you. Join our free online community, get the resources you need, and connect to other vets who know where you're coming from. IAVA.org, we've got your back. When you pick up a book and let your imagination break free, you won't believe how much fun it can be. Experience a world of adventure and endless possibilities. Get tangled up in a good book. Explore new worlds. Read. I'm home and I love it. I'm home. I'm home where I belong. It's always nice to come home. But many Americans are at risk of foreclosure and losing their homes. Making Home Affordable from the U.S. government has already helped over a million struggling homeowners like these. The sooner you act, the better chance we can help you. I'm home. I'm home. Where I belong. What kind of service plan does this come with? Unlimited. Can I keep my same phone number? Absolutely. How do I change the ringtone? Just hook it up to your computer. Does it have a camera? What's the warranty? Does it come in silver? Can I put my party shuffle on this? Does it have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack? You sell a lot of these? It's the one I carry. You ever get those phantom vibrations in your pocket? Any questions? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to ahrq.gov.
everybody. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Dr. Mack. And before we left Dr. Mack, we talked about snakes and the snakes in Florida, the snakes here. Let's talk about some other animals that you've treated in this area, some exotic animals. Well, I mean, I, I've seen quite a few. Uh huh. You know, uh, uh, I've had about maybe seven years ago, I had a uh, wallaby come A in. wallaby? Yeah, a wallaby is like a little small kangaroo. Here in Charlotte? Well, actually, the owner lived in South Carolina. Okay. And so they brought it here to me because uh -huh. uh, uh, the animal had quit eating and come to find out after taking x-rays that the animal had eaten a bale of hay, but it, it had ingested the wire, the, the string that wraps the bale. Oh. And so the, basically the string was like here and it went through the intestines, but it couldn't Ooh. digest. So we had to go in there and do surgery and remove it. Uh -huh. you know? And um, it was a, a successful surgery, so that was one of the strangest animals I've treated. Um, I see a lot of different types of birds, and um, I never forget the only one rattlesnake I saw. A guy had called and said he thought he had a tumor in his mouth, so I was like, "The snake? The snake, right? You know, obviously when he went to open his mouth to eat the rat, the guy saw something in his mouth, and lo and behold, I was able to. Well, the guy could handle the snake, so I was like peeping out the door when he took it out the box." And then I went and gave it a shot that, that you know, put it to sleep. Uh -huh. Then I could operate on its mouth and take the little small tumor out. And so that's the only poisonous snake I've ever seen. But I've done C-sections. Matter of fact, at the Discovery Place, about maybe about 12 years ago, uh, they had uh, a big old uh, Burmese python there. Uh -huh. And I did, and I don't think anybody else had done it up till then, uh, the first successful C-section on that snake. It's about a 16 foot long snake and I took out 43 eggs. You know, um, took me six hours. That was a six hour surgery and I did that for free for the ah. Discovery Place. Yeah, I did you film that? that? Yes, I sure did. I did film that. I got, a, I got the video somewhere. Wow. Yeah. I think my son took the Green Bay Packer Panther game and <laughs> well, that's not a bad Filmed thing. over it, you know. I'm like, dude, that's my snake video. <laughs> you know, so yeah, that was, that was, that was probably my most, but I, mm -hmm. I routinely do uh, C-sections on iguanas that, you know, can't lay eggs or give birth, you know. Oh, really? Yep. Um, I've done um, major surgeries on guinea pigs, you know, um, broken legs on um, uh, monitored lizards. You know, so I mean, every day is something different coming uh -huh. in the hospital, which is I, that's why I love my job. You know, because I I don't have any idea what's coming in the next day wow. or what type of problem it may have. You mm -hmm. know, and it's and it's different nowadays because you know, 25 years ago I didn't see this many. You know, because now that people now that the guinea pig is just part of the family is the, the dog. Mm -hmm. You know. And um, and I love kids because kids tell their parents, "You gotta fix them. You gotta fix them. Aww. They gotta come to the hospital. They gotta uh -huh. come see me." Uh -huh. you know? And they pull me to the side and say, "Look, uh, they ain't spending the whole. We ain't we ain't, <laughs> we ain't breaking the bank <laughs> on this guinea pig." <laughs> well, we can buy another one. Got it. Got yeah, it. I got it. <laughs> uh huh. You know, so it's a, enjoy it. I really I really enjoy my job. You do. Yes. But yeah. thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun. Yeah, I just loved hearing me. your stories yeah. about thank all the animals. Yeah. So how long do you think you're going to keep doing this? I'm going to do it as long as I can. Uh -huh. I mean, I love it. It's not work. I got the best job in the world. You know, I enjoy helping people. I enjoy, you know, helping animals, you know, being an advocate for animals. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't talk, so somebody has to speak for them. And I love that part. You know, I love that part. Speaking of can't talk, I had a question on my list for you. Now, we know the animals can't speak English, right. so you could kind of tell what's wrong with them by their actions and the yeah. way they bark and whatever. The, the mannerisms, uh -huh. the body language, uh -huh. you know, the eyes. They uh -huh. tell a lot about the eyes. Uh -huh. You know, because they have, I mean, you know, dogs are descendants of wolves. Mm -hmm. And if you ever watch a pack of wolves, it's all one lead in the pack. Uh -huh. You know, so they, ha they have communication skills, you know. Uh, nipping on the nose, mm -hmm. you know, the tail tuck, mm -hmm. you know, when the dog gets aggressive, the hair rises, mm -hmm. you know, so you have a lot of different things that we can sit even mm -hmm. in the exam room. Mm -hmm. You know, I can literally look at a puppy and tell you how that puppy's going to be mm -hmm. when he's a year old just based on how he's acting. Mm -hmm. But you, you tell me, can you tell when you got a two year old that comes in in your presence, you can go, that's a bad little boy. Yeah. Right. You can tell it right off the bat, you know, because that kid wasn't, didn't have any you know, parental training. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell when a four-month-old puppy had not been trained mm -hmm. properly and he developed bad social skills, mm -hmm. you know, so so it's the way he's acting, the way he, you know, he approaches you, 
you know, a puppy should come up to you just wagging his tail and just wanting to lick you. Mm -hmm. You know, anything else is, is unacceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, if he's stand backish and moving back in the corner and you go to pet him, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, that's not good for a puppy mm -hmm. to do that. It's like you go say hello to a two-year-old, he kicks you, mm -hmm. you know? My question for you, though, is would you say that you can talk to the animals? I can communicate. You mean like the dog whisperer? Yeah, yeah like Dr. Doolittle. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, not talk to him in a sense. You know, I can do my little, hmm, hmm, hmm. Oh. You know, you know, uh -huh. you know, different things, you know, uh -huh. a little bark here. Uh -huh. And they can kind of communicate on that level. <laughs> You know, so, <laughs> so you can talk to well, them. Well, I can't talk to them like, you better not bite me. <laughs> <laughs> and they do know, most dogs know no. Uh -huh. Bad dog, bad dog, uh -huh. and good dog. Uh -huh. Literally, when you tell a dog bad dog, he kind of like, whoa, how you know that? How you, how you know what uh -huh. I was doing with bad? And then when you go good dog, you see the tail wagging and uh -huh. that sort of thing. So uh -huh. most people, you know, that's like common knowledge, you know, dog, people, communication. Uh -huh. Good dog, bad dog. Uh -huh. You know, so, so you can talk to the animal. Can, yeah, I can talk to him. Okay. I can talk to him. Okay. I'm special. <laughs> You're special. <laughs> <laughs> I'm special. You mentioned the dog whisperer. What do you think of his show? Oh, he's he's doing what most veterinarians can do. Uh huh. You know, he's just uh, he's just got a he's got a gift that he's he's using. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's using. I mean, because like, if you watch his show, I mean, Lily, what does he say? I train the dog, but rehabilitate the people. Oh. He's telling the people how to treat the dog. It's the dog. Uh -huh. If you don't want him on the couch, you got to make him not get on the couch. Right. So when you go to tell him he can't get on the couch, he goes, right. Mm -hmm. You go, I can't do nothing with him. Dog whisperer comes and says, I'm going to show you how to get him off the couch. Mm -hmm. I can show you how to get him off the couch. Show you get him. I can show you how to get him out of your bed, mm -hmm. out of your house, or do whatever. Most veterinarians can. It's uh -huh. just a behavior modification. That's all he's doing. Uh -huh. But he's working with the person. It's the person that he's actually uh -huh. training. He's just rehabilitating the dog. He's training the person. Uh -huh. That's why the people go, oh, I'm so happy you came. I'm so happy. <laughs> but they, you don't know behind the scene, they paid that dude about five Gs. <laughs> to come and get him off the to couch. To come and get him off the couch. <laughs> I'd have done it for one. <laughs> oh, thank you again for joining me today. You're thank welcome. you so much, You're Dr. So Matt. <laughs> and I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my show, Better You, here on Public Access every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Thank you. <laughs> that was cute. Yeah. I like this second show. <laughs>